Today we're going to be talking about some of the best build tips when it comes to building and designing your own houses in Enshrouded. Now for this I will be doing a small blacksmith's house next to this manor house build which if you want to see a time lapse of you can find the link in the description below. Now starting off the first thing I recommend everyone do is leveling out the ground. So you can either use the rake and level it out that way and drag the materials across so that it, it's spread out nicely or you can grab the terrain tool with the build hammer to level the ground by right clicking to remove the earth. Personally, I prefer using the rake as you can clearly define the area with a dirt road for example or if you have a stone road nearby you can actually use the rake to bring the stone road to your base to give you a nice buff throughout. Once I've laid out the dirt foundations, I plan the rest of the build, starting off with whether the house will have a cellar, as this is the perfect opportunity to build one, as later on you'll find that you have your walls and your roofing, and you're going to be battling with the camera angles to try and get the perfect cellar built. It's always better where possible to plan ahead. If you are going to be using a cellar, do dig it out using the hammer and terrain tool. You'll want to have enough space to add a floor and a full height of wall, otherwise things start to feel a little cramped. I find the best way to do this is to actually grab with the hammer the larger foundations for a buildable, place that down and then delete it as that will dig out the space for you rather than the terrain tool which allows you to remove it layer by layer but not as fast. From here we can add the flooring and walls to the rest of the build. Now I tend to ensure that my builds are at least two, ideally three foundations in width and depth as this allows comfortable space for stairwells, any furniture or anything else that you want in that location. Now the single wall gives you enough height to have a pretty cozy room but if you're wanting to use chandeliers then you're going to want to have a room that's at least one and a half walls high otherwise the chandeliers are going to be at head height. Now if you do do this I highly recommend using the half timber walls to create beams across the floor above you or the roof if it's a two-story house as this makes it look like it's got supported beams throughout and I think it's a pretty cool look versus all the other materials I just think a single beam of this looks amazing. And speaking of these single beams I also like adding a single layer of wall along the bottom and also the top of the walls as a kind of curtain to add extra depth and detail to your build and it's probably the easiest way in which you can immediately improve the look of your builds whether it's adding an overhanging roof cloisters around the windows, ledges and borders around features, adding a chimney for example, or even replacing a flat window with a bay window. Each of these little touches can go a long way to making your build pop, so to speak, and I highly recommend playing around with that. When you're placing these walls, think about what materials you're using. You want to make sure that you're mixing it up. You're not just using a single material because it tends to look quite boring. For example, I love using stone as a lower level to my builds and then add the refined wood and half timber walls above this to make a really clean luck almost Tudor-esque. Another option that you can do that I've played around with so far is rough stone and then polished stone for detailing or the, the normal stone. I think playing around with it can really make the build stand out. If you've got a bit of free time and you want to do some really intricate flooring then you can place a one voxel at a time of different materials and it can create a really nice mosaic kind of checkerboard floor. It looks great but it requires a lot of work. And this is the same when it comes to roofing as well. Now I often find roofing is the most difficult part of the building system in Entrouded. I've always really struggled with it, namely because of the difficulty finding the right position for placement of the roof tiles. However, roofing pieces are some of the most versatile pieces in the game when it comes to building. 
Firstly, a single roof serves a purpose, but you can actually place a second roof layer above it to make the roof thicker. This also gets rid of any materials that are poking through the side of the roof, making the build a touch cleaner. And this is actually what the devs have done when it comes to their prefab builds as well. Roofing also adds an opportunity to create some really intricate architectural pieces. Rather than snapping roof pieces together, place roof pieces diagonally in an apex to create detailing above doors and windows. You can also use these to add depth to your outer walls like we mentioned before, but this comes with the added bonus of providing a different material, whether you're using the tiles, the, the bricks, hay, each has a different look and feel to it and it's well worth playing around with. Now for the interiors, I like to build custom fireplaces using the braziers. If you dig a hole and place a small level floor underneath that, you can then place the brazier on top of it so that it's lying straight. From here, you can then clip another floor piece into the brazier so that only the, the cup of the brazier is showing with the fire coming out. Uh, this makes a perfect fire pit outside, but if you want to have a nice looking fireplace from here, you can then build a custom mantle around it and border it. And I think it just looks fantastic. Personally, I feel it's much better than the fireplaces that we can use that they give us. However, I do think it's well worth placing a fireplace somewhere in your build um, that the, the, the ones the devs have made because you will then get the comfort bonus from that. Now, speaking about reusing items, you can place windows together and these can create alternative fencing and trellises for your gardens, which I think look great. This isn't just true for the windows either. Play about with the different items, clipping them together to see what you come up with, such as the clip clipping of candles into blocks, or like we said before with the braziers. Now, if you feel a little overwhelmed with the building system in Enshrouded, but you still want to have a nice looking house, you, you don't necessarily have to do all the work yourself. Consider placing your altar in range of the other buildings that are scattered around the map. Then all you need to do is repair what's needed and you'll have a pretty good house that you can add extensions to whenever necessary. And this is probably one of the best things that you can do early on because any of the furniture and fitting within the house is going to add towards your comfort bonus level and you may not have access to the higher level items early on in the game. So it's well worth doing from the get go. But that is all that I have for you in this one, guys. If you did enjoy this, please do hit the thumbs up and let me know your favorite build tips in the comments below and check out my manor house time lapse next. You can see the video here. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon. Most notably our Solar Eclipse Patreon, Firefless, and our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben, and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dr. Shotgun. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.